A really important part of good looking user interfaces are animated widgets. So what we're going to make is this app here. Inside of that, I have a button. If I click on it, we have an animated sidebar. This has a button and it has a text field where I can write over multiple lines. If I write too many lines, we get a scroll bar. All of this is quite easily implemented. On top of that, we can also do all of this in light mode. We have the same sidebar, although now it's looking a bit brighter, but with the same functionality. So let's cover some theory first. In Tkinter, you can create animated widgets, but you do not have pre-built components for it. As a consequence, you have to make your own systems. For that, you need two major concepts. The first one is the after method. This one allows you to call a function after a certain amount of time. This you combine either with the layout methods or with configure. Those can update the position, the size, the text, the color of any widget. To go into a bit more detail, widgets can be updated in real time using either configure or the layout methods. For example, if you're calling a layout method multiple times, the current one overwrites the previous one. If we're calling button place once with X being 10 and Y being 50, and then call it again with 210, only the second one will be displayed. The previous one will simply be removed. That way you can update the position and the size of a widget in real time. On top of that, you can use configure to update the text, the font, the colors, and all the stuff you can update inside of configure. I'm gonna play around with this in just a second, but there's one more thing I do want to talk about, and that is when you're animating widgets, you want to use place, at least when it comes to the layouts, for the simple reason that only place can give you pixel by pixel positions. Imagine using the grid method for animations. Inside of the grid, you can only specify the current cell we are working in. You couldn't move a widget by one pixel to the right. Only place can do that, so we have to use it for animations. That being said, you could totally use grid for animations. It just wouldn't look good. This gives us a couple of concepts I want to practice already. I am using custom Tkinter to make all of this look good, but all of this would also work with the normal TTK apps. After that, I'm creating a window and I have one button. The one notable thing about this button is that for the X position, which we are placing with the place method, we are storing the position inside of a variable. And this we're passing in here. We're gonna work with this position in just a second. Finally, we are calling window.mainloop to run the entire app, which means if I'm doing that, we have a window with one button that doesn't do anything right now. To influence it, I need to run some kind of function, which I'm doing when the button is pressed. Let's call the function move button. This function we have to create, move btn. There are no need for parameters. And in here, we can use the place method or the configure on the button to update the button itself. Let's start with the place method itself because I want to move the button to the right every time we are pressing it. Since I want to use button X for that, I need to be able to influence this variable. In my case, I'm gonna set it as a global variable using the global keyword. Once I have that, I want to simply increase button X by let's say 0.05 every single time we are pressing the button. To make sure that this is working, let's print button X as soon as we are pressing the button. Now, if I'm pressing the button, we get 0 0.05, 0 0.06, some weird stuff with floating point numbers, but that isn't going to make a difference. This number we can now use inside of the place method. Let me actually copy it. I want to place the button one more time with this button X. The difference now compared to the original is that button X becomes larger every single time. Let's try it. Now, if I click on toggle sidebar, it always moves a tiny bit further to the right. The numbers are quite large and we only move when we are clicking, but this is the first step to understand animations. Besides relative X and relative Y, you could also work with relative height. Let's say, I guess we can use button X in here again. If I run this now, every time I'm clicking, the button gets a tiny bit larger. I think I should set button X for the starting height as well. I want to have rel height, it's going to be button X. Now if I run this, we start with a much larger button and every time I click, the button gets larger and moves to the right. You could also just use X and Y here, that would be perfectly fine. 
all of the animations work either with absolute or with relative numbers. That would cover the layout methods. Besides that, we can also use config, or rather configure. For example, what we could be doing is declare a couple of random colors. Let's say red, yellow, pink, and green. Every time we are clicking on the button, I want to give the widget a new color. For that, I need some randomness, which means from random import choice. Every time I'm clicking the button, I want to get a color, let's call it color, and the value is going to be choice of colors. That way, let me print it really quick. I want to have my color, and I click on the button, we get one of the colors. Okay, we just got really unlucky in the beginning. I'm gonna add a few more colors in here so we have a bit more variety, like so. Now if I run this, we get much more randomness. That we can use to configure the button. For example, we could run button.configure. The argument in here, since we're using custom tkinter, would be fg color to get the actual button color. And this I want to set to the color. If I run this thing again, and now if I click on the button and move away from it, we can see we get different colors after every single click. If you were using normal tkinter, this FG color wouldn't work. You would need to use the default styling options, which are quite limited, which is why I'm using custom tkinter. It makes all of this much easier. But well, with that, we can update a widget in real time. What we now have to figure out is how to make tkinter do all of the work for the animation for us. For that, we have to learn one more concept. That concept is after. And after can call a function after a certain amount of time. This one would look like this. It always has to be part of the window. We specify two arguments, the amount of time and then the function we want to call. The amount of time here is in milliseconds. Since 1000 milliseconds are one second, this number here would be one second. What is really important is that this can be circular. A function that is called with after can contain after itself. In this case, we could have a function like this. After one second, we are calling this function here, then we are printing test, and then we are running the function again. As a consequence, this function will run forever. Let's play around with this one actually. I want to create another function. I will call this one infinite print. Doesn't need any parameters. In here, I simply want to print, I suppose infinite is appropriate in here. This I want to start whenever we are pressing on the button. Meaning if I run this now, the button only prints infinite. But what we can do now is run window after, then we need the time and the function we want to call. Let's say after one second, so 1000 milliseconds, I want to run infinite print again. If I run this now, I can click on toggle sidebar, we get infinite once, and after one second, we get it again, and again, and again, and again. This is never going to stop. For animations, one second is quite long, but you could set this to even one millisecond. Now if I click on it, we get a whole bunch of infinites. I suppose 100 milliseconds is a good middle ground here. While we are doing this infinitely right now, you could also control this, for example, with an if statement. To keep on using button x, we could check if button x is smaller than 10 and only then run this. To make that work, we have to update button x. For that, I want to set button x as a global variable again and then increase it by a certain amount. Button x plus equal, let's say 0 0.5. Only if the if statement now is the case, I want to print infinite and to make sure that we see what's going on, I also want to print button X. Let's run this one now. If I click on the button, we get infinite, but only up to 9.5. Then the thing stops. With that, all we have to do is combine this function with this function to get an animated button, which is bringing us to one exercise already. I want you guys to animate the button so that it moves to the right side of the window after we are pressing it. If you combine this function and this function, this should be fairly easy to do. Pause the video now and see if you can figure this one out. First of all, I want to work inside of this function here. For that, when I'm pressing the button, I want to call the move button function. 
On top of that, I don't want to change the height of the button, meaning I'm just going to remove the relative height both inside of the function and when I'm creating the button in the first place. That way, we are only focusing on one bit at a time. With that, we can actually come to the animation. Inside of the move button for now, I am declaring a global button X, I am increasing button X, and then I'm calling button.place. So if I run this, we are moving the button a tiny bit to the side and we're also changing the color. I guess we should remove this one because that would be quite confusing. The issue we have right now is after we're clicking the button, nothing happens. But instead, what we want to do is call this function one more time. Or well, not just one more time, but until we are reaching the right side of the window. For that, I want to use the after method. I want to run window and then after. I want to get an update every 100 milliseconds and I want to call move button. With that, I can run this thing and we get some kind of animation. It's really choppy right now and it doesn't stop. The choppiness we can fix very easily. All we have to do is reduce this number and this number. I only want to update the position by 0.01 units and I want to update this thing every 10 milliseconds. If I run this now, this is a much smoother animation. To control it a little bit better, what we can do is use an if statement that if button.x, let's say, is smaller than 0.9. Only if that is the case, I want to call the after method. If I run this now, the button is going to move. We have to wait a tiny bit. At some point, it should stop. There we go. Now it's stopping on the right side of the window. This isn't perfect, but I think for now it's good enough. So that covers basic animations. Obviously, this doesn't look very good. So let's make a good looking animated widget. What I want to create is some kind of slide panel. I want to create something like this, where we can click on a button and then we have a side panel. This doesn't have to be on the right, it can also be on the left, it's quite flexible. This, first of all, has to inherit from CTK and frame. I forgot this CTK at the beginning. That way, we are simply creating a frame. When I'm calling the thunder init method, we now need a couple of arguments. The obvious one is self and we need a parent. Other than that, we need a start position and an end position. The animation will then move between these two. Once we have that, as always, we need the super init method and we have to set the master to the parent. I forgot the brackets here. After that, I want to create some general attributes. Basically what that means, I want to store the start position as the start position as an attribute. The same I want to do for the end position. End position like so. Other than that, I need the width of this thing. Self.width. The width I want to generate automatically. This is going to be the window. I want the widget to start here at position 0.0. .0 for the simple reason that by default the side panel should be on this side. If, however, the user clicks the button, I want this thing to slide to the left, let's say to position 0.3. The demos you have seen was the panel moving to the right, but in this case, I want to move to the left. This thing is flexible though. Both would work just fine with the same widget. But first of all, we need to generate the width and the width we get from this distance here. That number we get with the start position minus the end position. And all of this needs to be absolute. The reason why this needs to be absolute, let me print the width, self.width and create the widget. This, by the way, needs to happen before we create the button. Animated widget. I want to create an animated panel, which is going to be the slide panel. For this one, the master is going to be the window. The start position is going to be zero and the end position is going to be 0 0.3, although this one has to be negative. Running this now, we get an error because I am incapable of typing. This should be an uppercase T. Now if we run this, we get 0 0.3. This is a proper width. But if we didn't use absolute numbers in here, we would still get 0 0.3. But if we used other numbers, this might be a negative number. For example, if I want to start my widget on 0.7, so somewhere on the right side, and then move it to 1, then we would get a negative number. 
Since this would create a negative width, we would get some weird results. As a consequence, always use absolute values in here. Also, spell them correctly, that tends to help. With that, we get positive numbers. The floating point weirdness here, you can just ignore. It's not going to make a difference. So, with that, we have a proper width, which means we can actually place the thing. I'm going to use self.place. Let me add a comment here as well. I want to get relative x. That would be self.start position. Relative y would be 0. Then we have the relative width. That would be self.width. And finally, I want to have relative height, which for now would be 1. Now for run this, we have a sidebar all the way on the right. It's kind of hard to see right now, but it is the brighter stuff here. All of this. To make sure that this is a bit more visible, I want to set an FG color to, let's go with red. Now for run this, this is much more visible. On top of that, to move the panel to the left side, I want to change these numbers back to 0 and negative 0 0.3. That way, now the panel starts on the left. Because the start position is 0, so this self start position is 0. With that, we need a few more things. All of these numbers are for the animation itself, so animation logic. First of all, we have to track the position itself. By default, this will be the start position. This will become important in just a bit. Besides that, I want to toggle self.in start position. By default, this should be true. This is going to be a switch, and it is going to track if our widget is in the start position or not in the start position. If it is in the start position, we want to move towards the end position. If it is not in the start position, we want to move towards the start position. Which basically means this thing is going to determine the direction. We can use this right away, actually, because I want to create another method that I call animate. We need self and nothing else in here. And all I want to do is if self dot in start position, then I want to self dot animate or ward. If that is not the case, meaning else, I want to run self dot animate backwards. These two methods are what actually creates the animation. So let's start with animate forward. Define animate forward. What I want to do in here is, first of all, I need an if statement. If self.position is greater than self.end position. I should probably draw while doing all of this. This one here would be our window, a bit squashed. The start position right now is this point, zero. This would be our start position, or rather this one here. Besides that, we have the end position. The end position right now is somewhere here, negative 0.3. That is a horrible 3. That's looking better. Finally, we have a position, this position here. At the start, this is on the start position, meaning it's here. This position, I'm going to move a tiny bit further to the left every time we are calling animate forward. However, I'm only going to do that until we reach negative 0.3. For that, we have this if statement here. We are only going to move the position to the left until we are reaching the end position. If that is the case though, I want to update self.position and reduce it by 0.008. The number here is fairly subjective. It basically determines the animation speed. Just choose whatever you think looks good. Once we have that, we can run self.place again. Let me copy the numbers actually from up here, because we can reuse quite a bit. For the x position, we now don't need start position, we just want the position. Relative y, relative width, and relative height can stay identical. Finally, what we are going to need is self dot after. I want to run another function after 10 milliseconds. The function I want to run is self dot animate forward. With that, we should already have something. Let me run the entire thing again. And now if I click on toggle sidebar, we are moving the button to the right. And that is because the button still gets the move button function. This I want to change. I want to get my animated panel. In here, I want to run a method. The method I want to run is this animate, which means animated panel.animate. 
Now let's try this again. If I now click on toggle sidebar, this thing is moving to the left. Although if I click on it again, nothing is going to happen. And to make it a bit easier to see what's going on, let me update these numbers here. Let's say to 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. Now if I run this again, this thing is much more in the middle. And if I move it to the left, now it only moves up to 0 0.1. I hope you can follow the logic here. I am going to stick with the original numbers like so. And now we can keep on working on this. First of all, once we are reaching this position, which means an else statement will be triggered, I want to set self.in start position to false. That way, once we're clicking on the button again, we would run animate backwards. This we now have to create, define animate backwards. This one also doesn't need any parameters besides self. And now we have to do basically the same thing we have done here. As a consequence, I can just copy the entire code and paste it in here and make some updates. First of all, self.position, we only want to run if the number is smaller than self.end position. Actually, this should be the start position. The reason for that, let me draw all of this actually again. We have the window one more time. And again, we have the start position at zero and the end position at negative 0.3. Right now, the position when we are calling this method here is going to be on negative 0.3. And we want to move it a bit further to the right every time we are calling the method. However, we only want to call it until we reach the starting position, this line here. That is covered with this if statement. If that is the case, I want to increase the start position by the same amount. You could use a different number in here, but you probably don't want to. After that, you're calling place, although after now is animate backwards instead of forwards. Finally, if that is not the case anymore, in start position should be true again. With that, we should have a basic animation. If I now run this, I can toggle this and we have an animated sidebar. That's looking pretty good. Although right now it doesn't look very good, let me run it again. All we get is a red frame that we can move, but it doesn't have any content. And well, generally, I want to make this thing look a bit better. First of all, I want to have a gap between the frame itself and between the surrounding. This I do with relative y and relative height. For example, I could set the relative height to 0 0.05. And then the relative height is going to be 0 0.9. Running this now, we get a gap between the top and the bottom, while the frame itself is still in the middle. Besides that, for the start position, we can increase this by a tiny amount, let's say 0 0.1. Now if I run this again, we have, that's quite a large gap, let's go with 0 0.05. That's looking a bit better. The toggling itself still works, although we have to make a few more updates here. The problem, if I run this again, once I click on toggle sidebar, we are covering the entire height. So this we can change already. I want to copy all of these numbers here. And now when I'm calling place in here and in here, so animate forward, animate backwards, I want to have these updated numbers. That way, this is looking a bit better. Although there's a small jump in the beginning, and that is because of this. We are setting the position to zero because we're getting start position from the parameters, but not from the updated value here. We can fix that by setting self.start position. And now this is much smoother. That being said, I think this is a tiny bit large. Let's go with 0.04. That's looking a bit better. Once again, you can play around with these numbers. It's entirely up to you. They're quite subjective. What is much more important though, I don't want to have a red background color. Instead, I want to minimize the side panel and work with the animated panel. What is really important to understand now is that this side panel is simply a frame, which means we can place any other widget inside of it and it would still work the same. For example, I could create a CTK and CTK label with the parent being the animated panel. After that, I can set some text. Let's call it label one, like so. And this I want to pack right away. Although any other layout method would also work just fine. 
I want to set expand to true, fill to both. And on top of that, I want to add a bit of pad X. Let's go with two and pad Y with 10. If I run this now, we have label one covering the entire frame. The rest still works just fine. I can do this again and change it to label two, run this again, and now we have two labels in here. The same thing would also work with another widget, let's say with a button, I simply called this one button. If I run this now, we have a button all the way at the bottom. Although the padding here looks a bit weird. Especially X padding doesn't work particularly well in here, but Y padding I think still works just fine. Yeah, that looks okay. On top of that, for this button, I want to remove the corner radius, so I'm going to set it to zero. Now, this is looking much better. Finally, one more widget that we can use that I don't think I have used yet is called CTK and then CTK text box. This is a text box with the parent being the animated panel. And this I want to pack as well with expand being true and fill being both. Now if I run this, we have a text box that we can type in. Although the background color here doesn't really fit. To update that, we have to set inside of the widget the FG color. The colors here should cover both the light mode and the dark mode. The colors we need are this. Now if I run this, we have no more background color, so this is looking much better. Although this might be very hard to see and it's a tiny detail, but in the bottom left we have a sharp corner like this. Whereas in the top left, we have a round corner. This happens because now this text box has sharp corners and is overshadowing the frame. Unfortunately, we cannot cut this off, but what we can do is set vertical padding. So pad Y and set it to 10. Now we have a rounded corner because the text box widget only reaches to this point here. We have a text box that works over multiple lines. That's looking pretty good. We can still use it just fine. We are making a lot of progress. On top of that, since we have two different colors, we could also update the theme. So what I could be doing is CTK and then set appearance mode to light. And I can run this again. And we still have the same outcome with colors that look consistent. The animation, once again, still works just fine. Although I do prefer the dark mode, but choose whatever you like. With that, we are nearly done. There's one more thing that we have to do, and that is to make this slide panel a tiny bit more flexible. So if I run this again, I can click on the button and all of this works just fine. However, I want the system to work a tiny bit different. What I want to have is that by default, this panel here is all the way on the right and not visible to the user. Only once we click toggle sidebar, then it should be on the right side, like so. This, by the way, if I run the demo again, this is what I want to have at the end. By default, I can't see anything on the right. Only if I click on toggle sidebar, we get the sidebar window, and then I can remove it again. So by default, it shouldn't be visible. For that, we have to make a few updates, although none are too difficult. As a consequence, we can add a second exercise. What I want you guys to do is to update the panel so it moves in from the right. You will have to figure out a couple of things, but pause the video now and see if you can figure this one out. First of all, I want to update the positions. My start position should be 1.0, so the app isn't visible and the end position should be 0.7. If I run the app now, we can't see anything because the actual frame now is roughly here. What is even better, if I click on the button, this still works just fine, which is a really nice start, which means now we can work a bit more inside of the button to fix some minor things. First of all, when I'm running this thing, you can see 
on the right side, we are losing the gap. This one is very, very narrow. To account for that, for the end position, I also want to add, let's say 0 0.04. Now, if I run this again, we have the gap back. Although again, it's a bit large. Let's make this smaller, say 0 0.03. That I think looks better. Once again, these numbers are fairly subjective. Just choose whatever you like. We have a pretty good app. This is working just fine. I guess the one thing you want to be aware of here is that the starting position always has to be to the right of the end position. Because in our case, animate forward reduces the amount and animate backwards increases the amount, which means forward in our case is always left and backwards is always going to the right. Although this video is already getting quite long, so this you can implement yourself. It shouldn't be too hard.